when you play the game of trains, either you win or you lose, I guess. I mean, what, what, other, what other outcomes are there? Game of Trains is a completely abstract card game. It has nothing to do with trains or anything else. But on the plus side, precisely because the game is not committed to anything in particular, they could uh, choose whatever art they wanted for the cards and that allowed them to insert a lot of fun Easter eggs on the cards. There are a lot of interesting uh, references to, to pop culture and other things that players of games are likely to know. Let's see how the game works. The game of trains. Game of Trains revolves around a deck of cards such as this one, these ones. You see the illustrations, which again, some are cuter than others, but have absolutely no meaning whatsoever. All that matters is that each card has a number on it and an icon indicating a special effect. Each player takes a locomotive, which is of absolutely no consequence game-wise, but it's cute to have, Doo -doo. and then each player gets seven random cards from the deck and then you arrange them in descending order from highest to lowest numerically speaking then when it is your turn you can do one of two things you can take a card from the deck and simply place it anywhere in your line replacing a card that was there for example I decided I want to place this card here I replace it and I put the card that I just removed that was replaced in the middle of the table where there is an area for replaced cards. And again three I decide to replace this one now and so on and so forth. What I'm trying to do is to basically alter or reverse the order of the cards and to have the cards in my train go from lowest to highest. So I'm rearranging them in ascending order. The first player to do so is the winner of the game. So one thing I can do is to draw a card or I can use an action. I can use an action on one of the cards that have been replaced that are in the middle of the table, in which case I pick up the action, I show it to everybody, I perform it and then I discard that card. Here, for example, this icon allows me to switch two cards in my train that are adjacent to one another as I'm trying to go uh, ascending from descending, say, I'm gonna do this. Other icons, so this icon here allows me to switch two cards that have exactly one card in between. And now I decided I wanna do this, for example. And then you have icons that allow you to move a card two spots to the right, uh, sliding down the cards, the cards in between, or two spots to the left, again, sliding down the cards in between. Then there are uh, nasty cards. Cards such as the, these ones allow you to destroy, remove uh, cards from your own line and that of your opponent. Everybody has to discard a card and replace it with a card from the deck. This icon here means that everybody has to discard their fourth card, the one in the middle of the line, and then there is a similar card that makes you discard the leftmost or the rightmost. Again, everybody has to discard the corresponding card and everybody replaces it with a random one which of course can greatly upset your strategies. As you can see some cards have the symbol here then when I take that action I take the card and I slide it under my leftmost or fourth or rightmost card and that locks it, protects it from, from the there's a card that makes you move cards, protects you from this type of effect. And this is in essence how the game works. So draw new cards and place them in your line, replacing what's there, uh, replacing what's there I mean. Take effects from the middle of the table, repeat until uh, a player has all of the cards placed in ascending order. And this is a game of trains. Now it's a completely abstract game as I said uh, and it's fairly pleasant I have to say actually I was pleasantly surprised it turned out to be a pretty good game pretty interesting it seemed to be I imagine it would be like a family game and I tried it with my daughter Amelia who is six I also thought oh this is gonna be great uh, she's gonna uh, do exercise about numbers uh, you know get used to the idea of playing with numbers etc etc it didn't work all that well I think that the game actually although apparently 
she she would be able to get it, and a six-year-old should be able to get it. Uh, there is just more strategy, there is just more sequential thinking, and also more awareness that is required of what the opponents are doing than a six-year-old, than a child can uh, can deal with comfortably. Also, it is a pretty confrontational game. All of these cute Easter eggs, oh, this is so nice, look at that, ha <laughs> ha gives you the sense of a light game. But trust me, this can be a backstabbing game. It can be pretty mean as you clearly uh, use icons just to destroy the things that your opponents have been working to build. So you just have to be aware that there are some points of your line that are weaker than others, more, that are more exposed to danger than others, and you have to take that into account because the opponents are gonna try to do annoying stuff to you just as well as you're trying to remove their most valuable their most valuable cards as you say their best place cards and the ones that they have worked very hard to place in that in that position so uh, not necessarily play with your spouse game at least not in all families not in mine because my wife doesn't like games that are very confrontational so although this one is light simple quick um and fairly abstract all things that she likes it uh, there is a take that element uh, that she for example would not like and not all hmm. Uh, not all spouses that we play play with your spouse's games with appreciate that element. On the other hand, if you're playing with your gaming friends, then again you take it out as like a cute simple game and then people start being brutal and people start developing the most sadistic strategies possible. So I was surprised because actually it turns out that it seems to be like, it, again, the level of complexity is entryway, clearly. I mean, it's easier than Ticket to Ride, it's easier than Pandemic, it's easier than most games that we consider entryway games. But uh, then the, I would say the mental posture that you have to take is definitely one that is more suited to regular players that, that are used to exploit the mechanics of the game to pull some some curveballs uh, against the opponent to pull some dirty moves. So it definitely is a gamer's game, although it is a an entry level game in terms of complexity and it looks like a family game in terms of appearance and art. It's pleasant, it's fun. Uh, you have to really pay attention to what everybody's doing, not just yourself. And also another caveat that probably will not sit well with all players is that there is a random element, obviously. At the end it is entirely possible that you win the game because you get a lucky draw. Um, but then, of course, there is only a small chance, uh, in, in, I don't even know how many cards there are, but there is a really small chance that if you have, if you need exactly a 31 to win the game, because you have all of your cards in line, and you have a 30 and a 32, and you need a card in between, and you get exactly that one, yes, that can be annoying that the game and that then they climatically because of that exceedingly lucky draw. But at the same time, that will not happen very often. The game is pretty quick, so you just set up the game again and you play again. In general, even if luck is a component, really gameplay is about maximizing your chances of getting of getting the right card. Um, leaving large windows open in certain sections uh, that that, 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 you know, that you have seen, uh, that you think are likely to come up, and you've seen, for example, all the cards uh, within a certain range leaving the table and being discarded, and maybe you want to try to open or enlarge a window in another section. So there really are things that you can do to, uh, to court Lady Luck, to try to convince her to come your way. Although she's unpredictable, as it is in her nature, uh, there are still enough ways of trying to manipulate your odds, uh, improving your chances of getting good cards and reducing the chance of the opponent that they found luck not to be a problem. I found luck uh, to be an interesting element of the design, a challenge you had to work around rather than something that simply makes the game completely random. So Game of Trains, simple, light in terms of rules, deeper than you would expect in terms of strategy without being the deepest game out there mind you don't don't misunderstand me it is still a fairly light game but a little heavier a little deeper than you would expect from from rules that are this simple and again if you don't mind a little bit of luck and you do not mind confrontational gameplay then it is a game that definitely uh, can create some interesting interactions around the table